we are going to see the media streaming protocols and standards so i'll be describing the network protocols the different network protocols for media streaming over the internet in addition i will highlight some of the current particular or popular specifications and standards for video streaming so maybe you now i'll start with the 3 gpp and uh, i'll i'll continue with isma so uh, let's see the protocols for video streaming over the internet uh, here in this uh, session i will give a and uh, i will highlight the network protocols for video streaming over the internet first i'll review the important internet protocols of ip tcp and udp and this is followed by the media delivery and uh, control protocol so there are two different way of uh, approaching it so if i take the internet protocol now for example tcp udp ip these are all internet protocols so this particular internet pro uh, you take internet internet was internet was developed to connect a heterogeneous different varieties right heterogeneous mix of networks that employ different packet switching technologies so the internet protocol ip this internet protocol provides a baseline best effort network delivery for all hosts in the network this provides you know it it provide provide addressing best effort routing and uh, and a global format that can be interpreted by everyone that is a ip right on the, on top of ip are the end to end transport protocol from one point to another point where the where the transmission control protocol tcp transmission control protocol tcp and user datagram protocol that is udp are the most important one the tcp provides reliable byte stream services it's very very reliable it guarantees delivery via retransmissions and acknowledgments it will it will send uh, the packet if the packet is not received it will receive the acknowledgement for every packet if the packet is not received then again it will retransmit re so it guarantees a delivery via retransmission and acknowledgement on the other side udp is simply a user interface to ip and udp is therefore unreliable and connectionless it sends that's all from one person to another person to send the packet it won't take any acknowledgement it won't expect any acknowledgement so it is unguaranteed but it is faster because on time delivery we need udp so additional services provided by udp include uh, checksum and port numbering for demultiplexing traffic sent to a different uh, or different uh, sent to a same destination i can send different different streams to the same destination through a different ports through udp some of the differences between tcp and udp you know that affects streaming applications are listed here in the look at the slide look at that uh, the tcp operates on a byte stream okay while udp is a packet oriented it's a byte stream tcp is a byte stream byte by byte this udp is a packet oriented we have to create packet tcp guarantees delivery via retransmission but because of the retransmission it delays unbounded whereas udp does not guarantee any delivery but for those packets delivered their delay is more predictable so one way delay is or it's smaller third point tcp provides flow control and congestion control but udp provides neither it won't worry about flow control it won't look at congestion control udp provides more flexibility for the application to determine the appropriate flow control and congestion control procedures the fourth point tcp requires a back channel for acknowledgement it requires acknowledgement every every byte it need acknowledgement but udp does not require any back channel okay so the web and data traffic are delivered through tcp ip web you look at you are looking at the web right that web data are all delivered with the tcp ip protocol because guaranteed delivery is far more important than delay or delay jitter that is one side so if you want to download a file it is a tcp ip if you want to see the website it is tcp ip but for media streaming you don't want any delay so the uncontrollable delay of tcp is unacceptable the compressed media data is usually transmitted via udp or ip despite control information is usually transmitted via tcp ip so udp is always preferred in video streaming the media delivery so there are few protocols which will 
which will be used for media delivery and control protocols. See the IETF, it's a forum, IETF. This IETF has specified a number of protocols for media delivery, for media control and description over internet. So let's see the media delivery part. The real-time transport protocol, that is RTP, that is RTC, RTP, real-time transport protocol and real-time control protocol that is called RTCP. These two are IETF protocols and these are designed to support streaming media. RTP is designed for data transfer and RTCP for control messages. So note that these protocols do not enable real-time services. Only the underlying network can do this. However, they provide functionalities that support real-time services. You take RTP. RTP does not guarantee QoS, that is quality of service, or it will not guarantee reliable delivery. But RTP provides support for applications with the time constraints by providing a standardized framework for common functionalities such as you know, timestamp, sequence numbering, and payload specifications. This RTP enable detection of loss packets. RTCP provides feedback on quality of data delivery. So it provides a QoS feedback in terms of number of uh, packet losses or packets lost, uh, inter, inter arrival jitter, any delay, all such things will be addressed by RTCP. The RTCP specifies periodic feedback packets where the feedback uses no more than 5% of uh, the total session bandwidth. So, and uh, where there is at least one feedback message every five seconds. The sender can use the feedback to adjust its operation or adapt its bitrate. It will not you know, retransmit. It will adapt the bitrate. The conventional approach for media streaming is to use RTP or UDP for the media data and RTCP over TCP or RTCP over UDP for the control. So you should know these two. RTP and UDP will be used for media data and for control mechanism, we are using either RTCP protocol or UDP. So RTCP will be used over RTCP, uh, over TCP, RTCP will be used over UDP. Through UDP also it will be sent, so control protocol. So open RTCP is supplemented by another feedback mechanism that is explicitly designed to provide uh, the desired feedback information for the specific media streaming application. Other useful functionalities facilitated by RTCP include the inter-stream synchronization. There are two streams, how they are synchronized. There are two streams in the same different bitrate, same stream. So how to synchronize? So RTCP provide a synchronization and a round trip time measurement also. So RTCP is very much used in media delivery. And for media control, uh, in media control, uh, there are session control protocols, two session control protocols. One is RTSP. One is RTSP, that is our real-time streaming protocol, RTSP. That is RT, that is one. Second one is session initiation protocol, SIP. Generally, RTSP is a very you know, popular one. RTSP is most commonly used in video streaming to establish a session. It also supports basic VCR functionalities. Now recording functionalities such as play, pass, seek and record. If you want to go back and you can see that. That's a called RTSP technology. SIP is a commonly used in voice over IP, VOIP. It is similar to RTSP but in addition it can support user mobility and a number of additional functionalities. Next one is the media description and announcement uh, you know, protocols. See there are a uh, few things here I will mention only you know one or two. The session description protocol SDP is a one important media description protocol. Session description protocol SDP provides information describing a session. For example, whether it is a video or audio or the specific codec or the bitrate or duration, something like that. SDP is a common exchange format used by RTSP for content description purposes that to in 3G wireless systems. It has also it is also used with the session announcement protocol SAP to announce the availability of multicast programs. Okay. In the next slide, we are going to see the video streaming standards and specifications.
I'll give you a brief about you know video streaming standards and specifications. It may be a very small one. At your level, I think this is enough. It's, it's little old. With this, you can start you know uh, um, trying explore yourself to know the various different standards. The standard based media streaming systems. Standard based. This is a standard. That based media streaming systems. Those are all specified by a Uh, um, an organization called 3GPP. We'll say third generation partnership project 3GPP for media over 3G networks, cellular networks, and there is an another uh, forum called uh, ISMA, Internet Streaming Media Alliance. That is for streaming over the internet. So first one says about media over internet, media over 3G. Another one says that. streaming over internet the first one is 3gpp is a is a standard next one is isma is another standard which will say about streaming over the internet so these employs the the for the protocols so what are the protocols so first one is a media encoding protocol so what are those for mpeg4 video and audio there is a standard okay for uh, 3gpp it is called amr and mpeg4 video and audio are the meeting media encoding standards the latest one at that time you know is h.263 now h.264 is present 265 also have come so for media encoding we have to follow mpeg4 video and audio or h.h series h.26x series like maybe 263 or 264 or 265 that's for media encoding so we have to follow these standards another one is the media transport which which transport protocol we have to use for sending the media rtp is for data usually over udp or ip another one is rtcp it's for control right for control messages so we have to follow rtp or rtcp these are usually over udp or ip that's a media transport protocols standards for media session control there is a standard that is rtsp session protocol okay for media description and announcement we follow sdp these are all old actually what i gave here is very old uh, maybe you know 5 years down the line you can say so this is a starting point that with that you explore yourself understand what are the latest one the streaming standards do not specify the standards whatever i am saying these are all streaming standards right they do not specify the storage format for the compressed media but the mp4 format file format has been widely used for storing compressed media the one advantage of mp4 file format is the ability to include hint tracks that simplifies various aspects of streaming by providing hints such as you know packetization boundaries rtp headers and transmission times